All right, so we're gonna edit some Insta360 videos using the Windows-based uh, editing suite that uh, Insta provides. And um, here I've, I've taken the card directly out of the camera and I've put it into the computer. And here are the files that I've, I've got on there. Uh, one thing to notice about these files is that they come in pairs because there's two lenses. And uh, whenever the camera records the video files, it records a file for each of the lenses, and then you'll need both of those to stitch together um, and create the full 360 view. So this is the the files that are on the card. You could open them directly from here, and that's that's perfectly fine. I personally like to copy them and move them to a faster drive that I've got on the computer just because I have it, and I think it makes the, the editing process and the rendering process go just a little bit faster. So I like to move those over there. So again, note that you will need uh, both files uh, in order to do that editing. So um, let's go ahead and get the editing started. And what we'll do is just double click on one of the files. It will automatically know to bring in the other. And let's go ahead and make that full screen. And, oh gosh, here's some footage we wanna skip ahead from. So let's just go ahead and do that. I know um, I don't want that first part of the video file where I'm trying to figure out what's going on with the camera. So I'll just fast forward to to around here. Um, okay. And I know that that, that works out. Um, that's a point of the video that I'm kind of interested in. So th there are two things that we can do here. We can work with keyframes and sort of manually set the points where we want the the reframing to happen. Do we want to be looking forward? Do we want to be looking back at ourselves? You know, what do we want to show as part of the video? So keyframing uh, is one way to to position that um, that video perspective and to um, to focus on the things we want. There's also an auto tracking feature, which makes it super easy if there's something that we want to focus on to just sort of highlight that and then let the software do the work of, of keeping track of it. I'll, I'll show both ways in this video. So um, first let's do a little keyframing. So let's say I wanted to show myself here for a little while and then flip around and, and show uh, what's going on in front of me. So we can easily do that. I'm gonna go up here to free capture, okay. And in this case, there's a 16 by nine uh, ratio that I'm gonna use here. You wanna pick the one that's right for you. Um, you know, we're taking a 360 globe view and then projecting that onto uh, this flat screen. So it's kind of like taking a, a globe and making a map out of it. Um, the question is, you know, how big and how, how flat do you want your map to be? So, you know, you could do something like uh, something more cinematic if you want with a two, three, five to one, uh, you could do uh, something framed like this, maybe for Instagram, or you could do 16 by nine, which is pretty common with a 1080p type uh, resolution. So I'm just gonna use, use that. Okay, so let's do a little bit of uh, keyframing. So there are several buttons here that you need to be aware of. Uh, if you hover over it, you'll see that the first one is to create a keyframe. Second one is to delete that keyframe. Uh, the next one is deep tracking, which is what we'll talk about in just a bit. And then there are some others here as well. This is a time shift, so that'll make things sort of speed up. Here you can mark your in and out portions and jump to where those, those in and out marks are. Okay, so let's say we wanna watch me for a few minutes or a few seconds. Okay, that's great. Okay, now you're boring, dude. So uh, let's flip around. I'm gonna go ahead and just put a, put a keyframe here. And then just a little bit in front of that, actually, actually let's just play. For about that long, I wanna put another keyframe. Okay, except for this keyframe, I want it to point forward. So what's gonna happen when we replay this is that we're gonna start back looking at me, and then between those two keyframes, we'll do a transition to the front. Let's see what it looks like. Let's get in the right place. Okay. So then we're looking at me. And then in the period between those two keyframes, it's swapped around and it's gone to the front. And so 
one trick is to every time you want to make a transition, put two keyframes in. So we'll put a keyframe there so that from there and there, everything's the same. And then, you know, play it forward just a couple more seconds and we'll put another keyframe in and let's just maybe switch back to me. What that does is it just defines that there's no change between these two keyframes, but when we get to the next two, it's going to want to flip back. And the distance between those keyframes uh, is how long that transition takes. So you can go throughout the video and just, you know, keyframe to your heart's delight um, and keep track of, of the panning and tilting from there. That's one way to go about things. Another thing you can do is let's just kind of, we'll stay there. Let's do a deep track. And so we'll select deep track. We want to drag around the target that we want to start tracking. So in this case, I either want to get sort of my whole body, my whole torso, or maybe just, maybe just select the head. It's going to try to keep whatever thing that is that you selected centered. So you know, keep that in mind when you're figuring out where you want things to be. So um, if I center around the head, I might get a little bit more of the wing in the shot. And if I center it around the body, uh, maybe it, it makes me a little bit higher in the, the image. So let's just, we'll do the, do the head. So we'll use that. We'll say center the target and we'll start tracking. And this is just going to analyze the video frames frame by frame and automatically, uh, keep the focus on the subject that we're tracking. So we'll, let's just let this run for a few minutes. All right, I'm gonna, gonna go ahead and stop the track there. And I'm just gonna rewind this back to about here. And let's just see what that looks like. So there's our transition. And then we're gonna have another transition between that last keyframe and, and the, the smart tracking. But as you can see now, um, the tracking is doing the job of sort of keeping me centered there. That's really helpful for when there are changes in directions. So when you're turning and the camera's not gonna know to turn, um, but with uh, the tracking on, it will automatically do that. So for instance, I know there's a, a point in this video where I turn, let's see if I can find that. Eh, probably around here, somewhere around there. Let's go ahead and do another tracking session. You can see that the tracking is highlighted here where it's got some uh, tracking in the in the timeline and then the keyframes obviously you can see here. But let's, with the playhead here, let's do deep tracking again. And we'll start tracking. All right, I'll go ahead and stop tracking there. And if we go back just a little bit here, let's go back a little bit more, and we play that, you can see that uh, the turn happens, yet the camera tracks on the subject that we told it to. So that's a great way to keep that, that subject in focus. Another thing that you can do is, instead of focusing on yourself, uh, if there are other pilots that you're flying with, you know, highlight one of their wings and then it will track them and keep them front and center. So that's a good way to get some footage of your flying buddies. Okay. So, um, last thing here is, you know, just, just going through the entire timeline, getting it, how you look, setting the, the, the trim points, cutting off the beginning. Um, if you don't want that footage, you know, telling it where to end, figuring out how much of this you want, and then we're going to export it. So we can go to uh, video export, which is this button up here. I think you can also get that, get to that from file and export, sort of the same thing. Uh, you tell it what resolution you want, frame rate, you know, pretty much the defaults are great for these. You tell it where you want the file to be, 
and let's just call this three sixty test dot mp four and let's put that in our reframe videos and let's let that process work. All right, looks like our video is done. And if we click on this little folder here, it will open up the location of the exported file. Now this is going to be not a 360 file, but it's gonna be a reframed video uh, as, as per our instructions down below. Let's just go ahead and open that up. And you know, there are the, the timeline changes that we told it to do. It should swing back around. And then start the auto tracking of me. And then you know, later on in the video, if we fast forward through here, we'll see that, yep, there's the turn. And again, I'm front and center in the video there. So that's how you do uh, exporting of reframe videos from 360 uh, videos using Insta360 Studio uh, 2021. I think it's a lot easier than uh, working on a tiny uh, phone screen. And you can do just about everything that you can do on the phone. The one thing that you can do on the phone that you can't do in the PC-based studio is using the phone as sort of your, your portal into that 360 video. And, and as you move the, the phone around, that handles the tracking that you want to happen. Uh, so instead of doing a deep track, you're handling all of that. So that's kind of a cool effect. But to me, it's worth it to you know, just be able to, to do the editing on a real large screen PC. Uh, one last thing that I'll, I'll show here is that if you do find a nice piece of footage that you like and you like the frame, you can click on this button and uh, export a still shot of that. So I think the 360 camera is really good at, uh, at gathering footage that's really sharp and um, that's capable of exporting some, some nice still shots from. So that's pretty cool. All right, that's that. I'm gonna cut this video off for now. Hope that helps and uh, let me know what you think. Cheers.